You're listening to Well, I Laughed, part one of Excessive Force, Blast Off. How are you, Grant? Um, <laughs> it's been a weird week. Yeah, you came in with some, some energy. Correct. If you're like, wow, they must come in and just immediately start recording. No, there's usually a pre-session mm-hmm. when Maya and I talk about like our social security numbers and our mother's maiden mm-hmm. names. Mm-hmm. Credit card um, numbers. Right, 100%. Pins. Three biggest fears and where we stashed all the loot. Like That's <laughs> where we talk beforehand. And so there was a couple of like hot topics before then. But in the world of public facing, this weekend is the uh, state tournament. And um, a, a beautiful and less traveled part of the state. And that's all I'm going to say about it. All I know is that we are, uh, we're staying at a quality inn. And it's so for a lot of quality, our students, if you will. it is. It is. <laughs> and what's, what's more fun than staying at a quality inn with only th- almost 30 of your speech and debate students? Nothing. Nothing beats it. I mean, I can't think of anything, <laughs> can you? I actually do have one story about yes. this. Saved for this exact moment. She's going to hear it fresh. (laughs) So um, I learned years ago that when you go on these traveling trips, Mm -hmm. just bring your best friend and you can teach them what they need to know. But then you just have your best friend on the trip and they're a chaperone and the school loves it because they have a chaperone that's gone through the background stuff, but that they don't have to get a sub for. Yeah. So for years, Lydia has gone on these trips with me. I love this. And we need to bring... Uh, a certain amount of judges to state based off of our entries and we have a a pretty large program which Mm -hmm. is nice and so we turned this time to Jacob (laughs) his husband and it was like hey just want you to know totally fine to say no but we will pay you a little and here's the option etc and he thinks about it and he comes back to me and he goes Grant I will say yes but I have one rule one request that is required and they go what is it sure what is it he goes I cannot share a room with you and Lydia. <laughs> Lydia and I are both pretty bad snorers. If you've seen me on the TikTok, that probably doesn't shock you. Um, and Lydia, you know, we'll just call her a snorer. And, yeah. and Jacob, God bless him, the lightest little sleeper you have ever mm. seen out there. So the sleeping arrangements for state right now is in one king room, Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> and in the room next to it with two queens, sorry, you with- one queen, two queen beds, um, <laughs> is me and Lydia. No, I would and, say two queens. And Jacob and Lydia are the ones that are, that are married. married to each other. The they, students are going to see that and be like... They're going to be so confused. Like trying to do the math in their head. We haven't even played out how we're going to explain that to any of them. I just wouldn't. <laughs> I just well, wouldn't. What's extra fun too is uh, they're both riding the bus with us down there, uh, which makes sense. No reason to like spend your own money on gas yeah. and stuff to go down there. The bus has to go anyways. Yeah. And we have room and it's a, I mean, we're driving two hours, so yeah. it's not like a yellow Get school your, bus like, or stuff anything. Down. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just, because our students are so fascinated with adult life, it's like they're pressed up against the glass at the zoo. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm just, I'm kind of excited to watch them navigate it. But it's, just, it's so great. I'm going to have two of my best friends, and then we have this third judge who's coming. She's one of our teachers at school. She's wonderful. Which is great, because I'll spend a lot of time helping run the state tournament, so there's people, not only that I trust, but that I love, that are going to spend time with my students when I'm not around. And so I, I really am, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. I'm, I'm interested to see what their reaction is. Um, earlier this week, or was it last week? Time's linear, who knows. Um, two of my <laughs> freshmen came up and just shoved their phone in my face oh, after no. school. And it was the Blucifer video. Oh, Jesus. And I go, ha, ha, not every white guy with a podcast is, is me. me, guys. Like, I don't, I, that's not me. They don't, and they go, Mr., your name's in the title. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, have you heard what Grant's talked about or whatever? And um, I, like, everyone's kind of talking. I go, ah, ha, ha, ha. You are never to talk about that in this room ever. ever. And then they're not scared because it's me yeah but they are now excited because they're in on a secret secret, um, secret tunnel I, secret, secret tunnel, tunnel. <laughs> singing podcast yes so yes. that was that that was a fun little diatribe for the last three minutes a diatribe mm-hmm. was that your vocab word this week <laughs> no no. <laughs> no it's not just a word i know um sometimes i teach things oh actually you didn't the, tell me what it meant, though. You just said tribe? it's a word. Kind of just like a little rant. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the words that we did learn this week, solemn and tacit. Oh, yeah. So diatribe is like way up there. Oh, uh, yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Although 
Tacit, especially if Tacit's you, a, hard, a weird one. Well, tacit because it's a soft C, yeah. which you don't see a lot of. It's not tacit. Tacit. <laughs> um, and then solemn. Solemn. Yeah, right, exactly. Salmon. I go, so I go, I, listen, I understand this is supposed to look like salmon or something like that, yeah. or salmon or something like that, but when that E, M, and N hang out, it's a real weird time, kind of like when your cousins are over, okay? So this, <laughs> totally different word. I've also started to do this thing, sorry for the teacher minute, y'all, but I've been starting to do this thing. He's there was, not sorry. I mean, it's my... And he will do it again. <laughs> And I'm sad. Uh, <laughs> but no, I've been starting to do this thing. I'll pull the class together and they will quiet down. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll get quiet, but it's still clear I don't have their attention, right? Yeah. They're still like shoving in and stuff. And they're getting quiet out of respect for me, which I appreciate, but still doing the thing. So this week I've started to have to say, hey, y'all, I do appreciate it. I don't want silence because I don't like your voice. This is a speech class. Yeah. I want silence because I need your attention. And so I do need us just to kind of come up here real quick so you can participate in the learning. So turn your bodies, turn your faces. It's not about your voice. It's about being able to tell you this next part, right? Fair enough. Because I teach high school. I think there's a certain level of like, you know, agency that gets built in that way. Thank you for having me on this podcast. (laughs) Um, There was. Okay. And then... I had to explain what diatribe meant. Well, I was like, <laughs> did I lose the thread or did Grant lose no, the thread? I'm not the actually thread. sure what it was. Oh, right, because I go, so can I get everyone's attention real quick? Okay. Mm-hmm. Solemn. <laughs> <laughs> that was, here's the thing, that's both a fun delivery oh, and was legitimately the point of that story. <laughs> the, uh, the. The. <laughs> how was, how was your week, Maya? How have you been? I don't. I don't, I feel like I'm just like, kind of like floating, mm. you know? I feel like I've been dissociated <laughs> like the last like... Heard, heard. 36 hours for, I don't know, however many hours that has been. Um, I put this story together and I, I, I it's been, it, I feel like I patchworked it together and I'm still, I'm happy with how it turned out. I right. feel good about it. But still like, as I was like putting stuff in, I was like, I don't remember writing that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so there may be moments where I'm like, oh... Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Right. So I'm excited for this week in part because the theme is excessive force. Yes, I decided that. And if you listen to the end of Am I the Asshole, just so that you could know the theme for this week, I'm so sorry. It right. is none of those themes. I, I took I took over the top and was like, how else can I say over the top? I looked up synonyms for the phrase over to the t- over the top. Right. Excessive showed up and I was like, that's it. Um, which so so fun for me because I was kind of like on the brink waiting for what the official theme yeah. was so I could kind to start to pick uh, a topic. Yeah. Uh, this isn't where I thought we were going to land, so I am both excited about we that challenge. Land? One of the things we said last well, week. Well, which one were you hoping for? No, I'm not going to tell you that. Oh, I might use it later. Fuck you. <laughs> Listen, I'm just going to hoard on to all my ideas. Fine. Um, can I ask, has the weather been throwing you off the yes. way it's been throwing me yes. off? Okay, because it's nice, but yes. it feels like bad that it's nice and in like a nihilistic way. I don't know why. I feel like I my brain is like it's springtime, and then I like I write the date on like anything like for work or whatever, and it's like February. I'm like oh oh. For those who don't live in the Mile High City, uh, it got to 72 today. Yeah, it's been very. It's like warm in my townhouse right now. Like I'm considering turning the AC back on, which I really don't want to do. So I've just been opening windows and shit, but. Like, what? I drove around with the sunroof, so it feels like it's spring, but also yeah. it's spring and it gets dark before six. And there's and snow so it's on like the a ground. Terrible still. nightmare. Like, I go, I've been going for runs for the, like, training for the half marathon, and I still have to, like, avoid little snow patches. Like, what is <laughs> happening, guys? Um, I'm sure uh, a weather report from a city you don't live in is exciting, but it's just been a weird week been in really Denver. Yeah. Also, preparing for the half marathon, that's tough on my body right now i've run a 5k for the last three days i'm and really I proud of you for that i'm very proud of me too thank thank you barbie of course <laughs> as a person who ran a 5k once this week that to do three is a lot well i like i got i started a little late on my like i'm using the nike run club and i'm like kind of determined to like do as many of the runs as possible and i got behind starting it and so now i'm like playing a, a little bit of catch up and so i did two runs in one yesterday but that meant i had to do a long run that was the goal was a 5k and then the next day it was like an interval training, but then I wanted to add on a 15 minute run at the end and that turned into a 5K. And then today was just like a recovery run for 35 minutes and that was a 5K. And I was like, what? They're tricking me. They're tricking me every time and poor Bowser has been dragged <laughs> along for every single one. 
I I got a brilliant idea. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna have to sell sell you on it. Yeah. But I'm gonna sell you Perfect. on it. You and I. Perfect. Just Done. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Today's episode is but not good. Uh, so you and I, just you and I, yeah. sign up for five k sometime mm-hmm. in the next month. Sure. On the morning of the run, we take a picture and send it to the group chat. Hey, are you guys here yet? We're in the corner by the parking lot. <laughs> And when they start responding with what, we go, yeah, we picked up your guys' packets. And then we take a picture of our packets. Scare the shit out of me. A hundred percent. We could do that to Edgar. <laughs> Edgar, if you're listening, no, you're not. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is both fun, because I think it'd be fun <laughs> to do. Um, and also, our friends would be like, oh, that sucks. Guess we're going to miss this 5K. <laughs> um, but two, it's also fun because... It kind of gets back to the roots of this podcast, yeah. which was a social experiment for who was still listening. And then after, you know, we picked up more it's listeners, true. some of our friends stopped listening out of guilt. Yeah. And that means they won't know what's coming. Damn it. I really wanted to trick Edgar, but he does avidly listen to He might be podcast. turning red right now. Not he's when this is published. He's turning red I mean, right, na- right as right he's now. listening yes. and looking up all the 5Ks exactly. that are happening between now and the marathon. Exactly. Checking all the shared calendars. Yeah. <laughs> Texting Kelsey. Did we have something planned with Maya today? <laughs> so Edgar texted me about today's episode. The one that released today was um, Alone in a Crowded Room. Yes. And I've been the very, Fermi Paradox yeah, episode. I've been anxious about it because there was quite a bit of math. And I did like cut out quite a bit that I was like kind of rambling and I didn't think was necessary. And so I think it made more sense when I, when it, like what got released made more sense than what happened <laughs> in the room. Um, but Edgar texted me because we had talked about the Fermi paradox before, and he was like, "I hope you talk about this, the Great Filter." And I was like, "Of course, we're going to talk about right. the Great Filter." And also, a lot imagine of- talking about the Fermi's paradox and, and like not, not the Great Filter. Yeah, really and filter. I was like, and I also got really mathy with it. And he was, he like had finished it, and he was like, "It wasn't that much math. I really enjoyed it." And then Kelsey sent a GIF that was just like, "Why am I here?" <laughs> 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 and I was like, I don't know. I love that. Yeah. Um, I love that because I think, like, when daytime TV, like Modern Family yeah. stuff was a theme, every episode would have an A plot and a B plot. Yes. And it was always kind of clear what was the B plot. Mm-hmm. It was still fun. And then when I teach creative writing to my students, like, I will talk to them about A. I should show them an episode. Sorry, that's a lesson plan. Um, <laughs> And so, <laughs> yeah, just A plot and B yeah, plot. No, what is it? How sitcom. do they? How do they feed into each other at the end? Stuff mm-hmm, like that, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think in our own friend group, yeah. there are sometimes B plot things that happen with like kind of draw I two have names so many out mean of the hat. I could say right now. All, okay, so I was gonna say something sweet and endearing. My current favorite, like. <gasps> And this B is said plot? with love. I'm yeah. now realizing as I run the tape in my head, what I've said so far might be perceived as mean. Eh. I don't think any of our oh, friends... I'm just mean. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think any of our friends would take offense to what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, my favorite B-plot coupling right now mm-hmm. is Jacob and our friend Sophie. Yes! <laughs> Jacob is recently, uh, has a lot of time on his hands, and Sophie has a lot of crafts that yeah, she wants to do. Yeah, and Sophie's recently gotten into crafting. And I don't mean like making a yearbook. Like cutting wood. Yeah, I mean like she's in a cottage pre-industrial yeah, revolution. Yeah, she's like, how do I make butter with no tools? Exactly. <laughs> she most recently bound a book. Which was very sweet. Correct. But it came out of nowhere it's, for it, me anyway. It came out of nowhere. Also, we were in like a subgroup chat to yeah. try to help her figure it out because she didn't want someone else in our main group chat, which has like eight it. or nine yeah. people to like know what was going on Because it was too. like a gift for that person. Right. Yeah. It was wild. Anyway, yeah. I love that. I love that. I also saw... Sorry. I'm about to hard pivot That's kind okay. of for a second. I saw this article in the New York Times. Couldn't read all of it because it was behind a paywall. But uh, it was that. that... Especially as we kind of move into this new era, uh-huh. group messages is the new uh, social media. Yeah. That, like, you're not, like, sharing life updates on Instagram. You're not sharing life updates on, like, Twitter or yeah. Facebook or things like that. Those are no places for, like, jokes and videos. Actual life updates are now happening inside your group chats. That's and that's fair. so, I think that's, I mean, it's true I think for that's us. super true, yeah. And then I have a group of friends from college that are now all over the yeah. country. Uh, we call ourselves the Napa Naughties because we yeah. went to Napa uh, Valley. Yeah. Uh, well, they don't know. Uh, you talked about your vacation. That happened while we were changed podcasting. changed my life. Oh, I'm my kidding. Uh, anyways, that group messages are now like the new Facebook wall or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that I think all group messages then have a small constellation of a smaller small, groups. Yes, yes. And it's either intentionally small Smaller or, or like you had a weird event that it right. was just like half the four of, of us you. that yes. were going to the yes. movie, and now there's that group message yes. that happens. And yeah. if you aren't part of any of those, you friend, listener, right now, coming to you in the car, 
Sorry for the pre-work anxiety. You need to have your own little side quest and invite a handful of people, and then boom, now you're part of the constellation. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know. It is pretty your game. genius. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I play that game whenever I have to plan anything with any of our straight couples, couple friends, because it's always just the women or whatever that role is. The person that plans in your couple relationship and it's just them. And we're like, hey, can we get an answer? (laughs) Uh, For our group, this shocking note is that's Lydia. Yeah. Um, Yes. (laughs) Yes. Lydia, Lydia will get it done. Lydia's the only one with enough foresight to 24 hours before a big group adventure yeah. go to Costco. Um, yes. And she's actually really good at itemizing stuff, too. Uh, yeah. We have a couple of friends who are sober, like especially in my college friend group. And so it will even like split the bill around those lines. That's so cute. you have a portion like of the yeah. food, but not the portion of the, the non-sober alcohol. activity. That was a fun little break. <laughs> Don't know where we cut off there. I don't either. Um, Something that we talked about earlier this week is you know a person who you're trying to get a hold of them, Mm -hmm. and they were like, hey, sorry, I'm delayed. I was out parasailing for a second. (laughs) Um, I want you to know, out of every adult in America you might find, I probably love my job in like the top 5% of people. Oh, yeah. You like your job more than anyone else I know. Correct. I am like really aware of that. Mm -hmm. And so I have regularly thought, like, if I won the lottery, like... I'm sure there might be like a, a summer home or something, but I don't think I would quit. Like I just like my I, job so much. I feel like I would be like that too, but But then I hear about people yeah. who learn how to parasail on Wednesdays and I'm like, oh shit. Uh oh, I don't know. I don't even, I don't even know if I like parasailing. What's a gap year? What's one gap year to figure out? What's a Rom Springer after you win <laughs> <Yeah>. the lottery? <laughs> and I'm about it. I'm about it. Yeah, hundred percent. Um I dominated most of our check-in chat. I have had like nothing going on other than like I had a bit of a, a little bit of a menti beat you know as a snack and then <laughs> um, and by that she means she had a lot of my snacks during her menti beat. beat. Yeah and then Casey was like do you want me to help you edit the podcast and I was like no and he was like you can teach me how to edit the podcast and I can help you for when you get stressed or behind and I was like okay and so TLDR, I was editing down here and he was editing upstairs. Sure. And at one point, like I had opened the door or something and I heard both of us from both angles. And I was like, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't tell him to close this door because I appreciate him so much. But like, <laughs> can I share this is now my teacher moment? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm going to go teacher for you for a that's second. Uh, it's okay to praise growth sometimes. Oh, yeah. And that's not something <laughs> you would have allowed in September. That's, no, 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 no. That's not yeah. something at all we would have even really considered. No. We as in you considered. I still have a lot of anxiety. Sure. But I have less anxiety because even those those lost files, you know, the <laughs> oh, lost the, the recordings. First two episodes. Yeah. So we the reason we didn't lose episode three and four is because Casey edited those and like found out what was wrong with them right. and was able to like kind of fix them and he had edited them. Saving in, cocaine bear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Saving Private Ryan, but saving Cooking Bear. <laughs> Casey on a computer. Yeah. He had edited those in Premiere Pro, which is what I use to edit the video. So he right. already kind of understands what that is. And I'm still like... Right. Well, part of it, too, is... And listener, this now goes out to you. We care deeply about oh, yeah. this product. I yeah. mean, I know we are, at least attempt to be casual on this, yeah. but this is absolutely something that we, I want to make sure that it's very like, serious about. Yeah. We've ghosted a couple of people that we love who were like, I'd love to be on the podcast. And we're like, we'll let you know when we think it's time for you to be on the podcast. We, like, take it seriously. Yes, I want, and, I want it to always be something that people are going to listen to. That's right. why the Fermi Paradox episode gave me anxiety, and it will continue to give me anxiety until I know that it didn't suck performance-wise. More or less anxiety than The Devil's Hole. <laughs> <laughs> less. Okay. Cool, for cool, cool. sure less. Uh, some of the comments, A, first of all, if you're going to comment and tell me that I'm annoying, yeah, I know. That's fine. If you're also, gonna... <laughs> you better do it quick because I will delete it. <laughs> Grant, if you, if Grant finds it before I do, it'll be deleted. If I find it before he does, I will comment something so like agreeable that you will mm-hmm. then delete your comment, which is what has happened. Someone said you're not long for this world. Yes. And you said, hopefully. <laughs> That comment is gone. Meanwhile, I would have been like, okay, delete. Also, and I know 75% of our listeners know this, but the only people who comment mean things, men. All of them are men with weird profile pictures. Yes. And, and I can say that. Content who, is not good. Right. Um, I can say that because they're haters. 
I can I say love that hating on haters. also because we make money, like not a ton of money, <laughs> but some money podcasting. So clearly, this is something other people want. This video with over a hundred thousand views is bad. Okay, well, I have the power to delete your comment, and not everyone agrees. And also, you commented, which is now pushing this onto more people. Exactly. Whatever. Exactly. It was hysterical. Honestly, my uh, hairstylist, I like posted that comment that mm. I responded mm-hmm. to, hopefully on our story, and my hairstylist responded. She was like, "I would not do well as like mm. an Instagram influencer." something and I was like girl we did it in the month of June we you dissociate did it. so fast <laughs> turns out turns out nothing matters unless they're in front of your face and then it really a, hurts I have a kid who's oratory it's all about this oh well I should <laughs> should probably listen to it <laughs> just go ahead and show up at that tournament that I've been talking okay, to you about cool, casually cool. we'll make sure you listen to it honestly <laughs> I'm mouthing the dates I'm trying to like keep some mouthing, level so I don't even know what I mean it is. No, my mom listens to this. I'm not going to say anything. You have an episode to tell us. I do. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Okay. Ready. Are you ready? Are you I ready? Think, do you, is there an opening question? There are some questions. Um, are I don't think any they're... of them about Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Okay. <laughs> If you can't tell, I listened to the I first. the fifth. I listened to the first twenty minutes of Fermi's today. <laughs> it wasn't even intentional. Like as soon as you asked me that, I was like, "He is in fact mentioned." <laughs> Shit. Okay. All okay, right, I am ready. So this was another story where I had a main story, right, and then just started branching off, and so now there's like some minor stories. You'll see once I get to the main story that that is what what's happening. Okay. The the theme is excessive force, so. Prepare thyself. Prepare thyself. Um, but first, we are going to start off with a man named John Evans. Does that ring any bells? Um, I mean, is it a Denver story? Uh, is John Evans a Denver story, or is my story? Is a your story, story a Denver story? Yes. Okay, so is this where we get Evans Street, which is yeah. very much a major thoroughfare through my mm-hmm. neighborhood, and among other things. Okay. End of things I know about John Evans, though. Perfect. But I'm like, okay, I think there's probably a street My named after him. My biggest fear was that I would say John Evans, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, oh, that guy who did this. And I would and be then, like, well. <laughs> That's our shared fear every time. Because oh, you yeah. know weird stuff. So when I was like, devil's a hole? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk to me about John Evans. Talk to me about John what Evans Street Evans. is named after. Yes, so he was born in on March 9th, 1814 in Waynesville, Ohio, to okay. a family of farmers. Um, then my opening question was, do you know who John Evans is? Which Grant already answered. The answer is no. Uh, and he was luckily privileged enough to be able to pursue higher education. Um, basically, he like begged his dad, and his dad was like, but why? We have a family business. And he was like, born in Waynesville where? Ohio. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of our stories have been in Ohio recently. John Brown. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all of the Midwest blends together, and that is my bad. Uh, um, <laughs> as someone from the Midwest... I mean, I don't think Ohio's in the Midwest. Comment, I dare you. Um, <laughs> I don't think you should be able to get on a boat in your home state and sail to London, but like, that's fine, that's fair. whatever. That's fair. Uh, that's fair. That is super fair. Okay. <laughs> anyway, John Evans uh, received his MD from Cincinnati College in 19, or sorry, 1838. Uh, shortly after that, he moved to Indiana to begin his medical career, where okay. he heard a talk by Matthew Simpson, who was a Methodist Episcopal minister, and then he converted to Methodism. Did I say that right? Episcopal? Uh huh. Like I like said it. In, I said it in my head so many times that I was like. Episcopal? Episcopal. Is that an Episcopal or Episcopal? Epis- Episcopal. Is there two P's? Yeah. Episcopal. Episcopal? Episcopal. So he becomes Episcopal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this talk from Matthew Simpson kind of uh, converts him to Methodism, right? He also is a strong proponent of higher education. I'm not sure if this came with the conversion to Methodism or okay. just his own personal view. Um, this is a quote from him. The only sure ground for the improvement of our social and political condition and the only guarantee of the perpetuity of our free institutions, everything that is calculated to improve our schools and to render them them efficient instruments in bringing out that state of public intelligence and virtue must be the highest interest to every good citizen. 
They just didn't have phones. They just had all the time in the world. To in, like in write that sentence. The 18... sentence is insane. To write it and then to follow it. Sometimes I'll hear a sentence yeah. and be like, my college degree was good for one thing. And it was being able to follow along in that sentence. My but college... you could have shortened it. <laughs> my college degree was good for one thing. And it was learning that sometimes I need to reread things. <laughs> <laughs> my college degree taught me, you don't really need to read also, things. <laughs> there was a comment on the Devil's Hole TikTok and there was like, she's an engineer. Of course it scares her. Mother Nature is the sketchiest engineer. And I, I did was like, see that. That's, I need it on a shirt. Did you see the yeah. comment on the devil's hole that says she needs to know about the Texas flesh pit? I saw so many that were like, she needs to know. And I immediately blacked out all of them. Okay. I saw a couple. One of them was another, like a mud pit or something mm-hmm. like that. And I was like, I don't. Flesh pit was a word that I had to Google yesterday, just I so mean, you know. Don't Google that. I mean, I'm going to Google it. <laughs> Not on your work computer, I No, hope. on my phone. No, 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 on my phone. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, John Evans, huge proponent of higher education, Methodist. So we have a couple of friends I'd call a flesh pit, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a joke there, and it didn't feel right not to say it. <laughs> we know who they are. You, you guys know probably who know who are. it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, so in, ni- in 1848, I'm so used to writing 19 that I just, mm. like, instinctually write 19, and I have to, like, <laughs> see it now. I have 1927, 1845, 1948. I'm like, it's all 18, babe. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, John Evans made a name for himself by opening Indiana's first mental hospital. Um, Prior to the establishment of this hospital, mentally ill individuals were housed in a few log cabins. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like an actual quote. Okay. Few log cabins. Okay. Yeah, I was like... Like in the woods? It's where this this new mental hospital was located. It's in Indiana. So he's taking over a facility and he's going to build it proper. Yes. Okay. Um, This hospital was known as the Indiana Hospital for the Insane... Okay. Yikes. Um, but then it would change its name in, oh, this one's true, in 1927. They changed their name to Central State Hospital. Oh, okay. Uh, and he was named the superintendent in 1845. In 1848, so three years later, he moved to Chicago, where he had been offered a faculty position at Rush Medical College. And in 1850, he decided with him and eight other Methodists, uh, they wanted to open a new university. In the next five years, this happened. He, they wrote a bill for its founding, donated the land to its first buildings. And do you know what this college is? Is it Denver University? This is in Chicago. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it, Lo- oh, is it University of Chicago? Is it Loyola? No. It is, uh, sorry, Northwestern. Oh, God, that was the third it's one. It's Northwestern. Um, my hint that I would have given you if I had thought through my notes. Uh, the town- Wait, is that Evanston is named? Wait, Evan Street in Denver and Evan Sten in Chicago. There's even more things named after him. Named after him? Yes. That's wild. Yes. Wait, oh, my poor students (laughs) who are going to know about this tomorrow. Okay, continue. Hell yeah. You know I love history. Uh, Yes, that's why I probably included this part. (laughs) So Evans was also kind of a politician. He served as a Chicago alderman, and I didn't know what that was, and apparently it's like still a thing. City council. Yeah, it's city Mm -hmm. council in Chicago. They just call them aldermans, which is There's a lot of them. They have their own legislature, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he also helped to found the Illinois Republican Party. Who else came from the Illinois Republican Party? Uh, oh, God. He, that guy, theater. Abraham Lincoln. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> he also helped Lincoln in his campaign for presidency. Hey. Uh, Lincoln was also a fellow Illinois Republican. And when Lincoln was president, Evans was offered the governorship of the Washington Territory. But Evans declined. Evans did want to be the governor of a Western territory, but I guess like not that that far far west or something. Um, Sorry, only because I talked about the state speech and debate Mm -hmm. tournament that's happening soon. At least I think I talked about it this episode. Yeah, Yeah, Jacob and Lydia. Um, There's a style of debate in speech and debate Mm -hmm. called Lincoln-Douglas debate. Yes. Yeah. Casey's told me about that. I don't don't understand any of anything. It's all about values. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. Moving on. <laughs> so doesn't want Washington. He doesn't want Washington. The first person from Chicago who doesn't want to move to Seattle. Exactly. I love it. Right? Uh, <laughs> but so he, I think he'd made it clear at this point to Lincoln that he wanted a governorship in sure. the West. And his chance, luckily, came in 1862. Um, 
the first territorial governor of our dear sweet home Colorado, William Gilpin, wanted to raise troops to defend the region from Confederate invasion. Mm -hmm. Gilpin requested federal authorities allow and support the organization of Union forces in the territory, and this request was refused because the capital didn't understand that the Confederacy had strongholds already in New Mexico and Texas. Oh, so Colorado was like, fuck. Was. Right, right, right. And right. The, like, Washington, D.C. was like, um... Okay. Right. Like no. And? Yeah, we have, I forget, I forget we have they bigger were in fish to fry. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking. No, Gilpin Street is a street yes. in Denver. Yes, it is. Uh, it's okay. It's downtown. Yeah, I um, ran along it today. I yeah. Think. Okay. So there's a. So all of these people we're meeting are just there's. They're the name of the town. Yes. Okay. If you ever, if you ever, if you hear a name that you recognize and you're are familiar with Denver, yes, the answer is yes. Um, so Gilpin took matters into his own hands and organized the first Colorado <laughs> Regiment of Volunteers. Okay. Uh, to like help defend against the Confederacy, but the issue remained that there was no funding for this. So his solution was to find su fund supplies and ammunition by issuing negotiable drafts directly upon the national treasury. What? Yep. In total, he created about three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in unauthorized debt. So he was basically like, don't worry, the federal government will pay you eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's so funny. And it, it, yeah. The in king of ask for forgiveness, not permission. Yeah, he was like, okay, oh fuck you guys. God. Like, I'm just going to write the check anyway. No, what they don't understand is how close the Confederacy is. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill him and then I'll send him the bill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not, it wasn't like explicitly stated that this was in 1862 money. I think it was in 1862 money. If it was... If it was in 1862 money, today that would be $11.5 million. Oh, okay. So just a small little casual little lump sum. Just a All of casual Colorado's GDP loan, at the time. yeah, $11.5 nice. million. Okay. Dollars. Um, so <laughs> while this was successful, because they did end up having to hold off the Confederacy in multiple places, at um, they resisted Confederate General Henry Silby's advances at Fort Craig, La Glorieta Pass, and Fort Union. Um, so it was successful, but illegal. And so he was removed from his position. And so- What a thank you gift. And so voila, <laughs> there's an open territorial <laughs> governorship. And All this work and what did it get me? Sorry, that's just a TikTok audio right now. Literally, Gilpin was All like- All those photos of me in the back. That's not the right words. Kurt Hummel did it better on Glee. You know what I'm talking about. I do, um, barely. <laughs> I wasn't huge in Glee. I wasn't either, but I'm, I mean, I'm gay, so I know the theater reference. Oh, yeah. Oh, I get it. Uh, April 11th, 1962. <laughs> that was called Making Space for Grant. Moving on. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Noted. Duh. <laughs> April 11th, 1962, Evans was sworn in as the new territorial governor of Colorado in Washington, D.C., or what would eventually be Washington, D.C., and then he made his way to Colorado by stagecoach. Before we get into what I want to talk about, about John Evans' history, I do need to acknowledge some of his problematic history. Okay. Because uh, so far, we've only talked about he helped found mental health care in Indiana. Mental health hospital. Okay, Not, fair. yeah. And not care. Maybe just like what that treatment looked like at the it time. It was an insane asylum. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and that was the word they used. Yes, And then basically. second, he... Uh, has helped found Northwestern University. Yep. So that's when the... That's what I want to stop at. Column. And then there's another thing that I, that's what I want, actually want to talk about. Okay. But before we get into that, I want to acknowledge some of the oh, like shittier things. Okay. Um, because I don't want to gloss over sure. them, right? Because some of you will have heard John Evans and been like, oh, that motherfucker. Right. Um, so for one, I'm not sure if this was occurring while he was there, but Central State Hospital, the mental health hospital that in he Indiana. helped found, was closed in 1994 and actually 1994, <laughs> amid long-standing rumors of patient abuse. Mm. Yeah. Additionally, once he was the territorial governor of Colorado, he played a rather important role in the Sand Creek Massacre. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. The circumstances around this event are pretty complex, so I'm not going to get like really deep into all the political intricacies and everything, but I don't want to brush over it. Um, so the short version is, there were some Native American raids on new settlers and supply lines in Colorado. And so he he's technically the territorial governor, but he was also by that also the advocate for the Native Americans in the area. 
or the indigenous in the area. So as in he was the federally appointed advocate or was he an actual That's just like advocate? what comes with the territory. Okay. It's not, okay. I don't, can't remember the exact term that they use, but it was like, you're also this for the indigenous people. Um, so there were several attempts for diplomatic solutions for obtaining those indigenous lands uh, for white settlers, but these didn't work well. And eventually Evans pushed for more militant options through the third Colorado cavalry, which was headed by John Shivington, which just sounds like someone who's going to like mug you in the sounds street. Sounds also a smidge like a Bridgerton name. Yeah, it's like Shivington or Chivington. I'm not sure. Have you seen the care. Bridgerton things that have come out recently? I've seen some of the ads. I'm okay. just, I don't want to watch too much of it before I see the thing. Heard, respect. Yeah. Gonna join you. Also, I feel like we don't have fun names like they did anymore. I feel like we cover a lot of really fun names. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I mean, with love to both of us, Warner and Thomas aren't necessary. Oh. I don't know if anyone reads that in a hundred years no. and be like, what a crazy name. But Shivington? That's a wild name. I have never once met a Shivington, and I'm a teacher. I hear 150 true, new yeah. last names a year. Well, yeah. Um, well, maybe there's a reason. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Evans issued the proclamation allowing Coloradans to, quote, kill and destroy no. as enemies of the country, end quote, any hostile indigenous Native American, however you want to identify or call them, oh, fuck um, him. they encountered, yes. Evans met with the leaders of the Southern Cheyenne and Southern Arapaho at, like, at once. He also met with the Utes at some point, but that okay. was separate. Um, so he met with the Southern Cheyenne and the Southern Arapaho, Arapaho at Fort Weld, where he absolved himself of any responsibility for making peace with them. Remember, like, technically what? his job as territorial governor is also being, like, a representative for these right. people. He also has such a temporary claim to the territory he is governing. Yes. He's been in Ohio, Indiana, and then Chicago, and now he's in Colorado. It's not like he lived in Colorado and then was governor. It's no. like he was... Not that that would have justified it or no, anything, but, he, but like, for him to be in the yeah. position that he is in... The way that I read it, and I'm not sure if this is totally true, is that he literally was in Chicago, got appointed, went to D.C. to get sworn in, went back to Chicago to like get his things, and then went to Colorado. So I'm not even sure that he even... So he arrives as governor, yes. first time he'd ever seen yes. Colorado. That's kind of how I gathered it. Um, so Evans met with the leaders of the Southern Cheyenne and Southern Arapaho at Fort Weld. He absolves himself of any responsibility for making peace and said they need to negotiate with the military. He then promptly left for his annual vacay to the East, East Coast, because he needs to relax, you know? Sure. Um, so the tribes the- would need to go to Fort Lyon and there they would, they were told by the commander, because this is where the military was stationed. So he's, they're doing as they're told to go, like, negotiate with the military Um, they're being attacked um by white colonizers to be fair they are also attacking but like their land is getting taken yeah it's It's much more of a self-defense oh yeah it's a self-defense thing but like they're the white people think they have a reason because they're like my cow died and it's like okay but you're also on land that's not yours uh, yeah so so they go to uh fort lyon and the gen- or the commander there said that they could camp in Sand Creek. And on November 29th, 1864, at least 230 Na- Native Americans were killed, mostly women and children. And like I said, this was, I'm not sure like if it was just one of the tribes or if they were kind of intermixed, but it was the Southern Cheyenne who were um, being led by Black Kettle and the Southern Arapaho who were being led by Niwat, which means left hand. And I'm sorry if I butchered that. There were no prior reports of violence and this massacre was led by John Shivington. So John Shivington just rolls like, up with shows up. the US military and just massacres. Yep, early in the morning. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, I knew a little bit about the Sand Creek Massacre. Yeah. You, you know what, you, when you read like the Denver Post or something and they talk briefly about it, and and this has always been in articles about statues around it yes. now, so yeah. that's like my touch point with it. I had never done a deep dive into it yet. And, and it, to be it, fair, I've also haven't done a deep dive. Sure. I read like three paragraphs on like two different articles. And so like... But it's just, it. I don't know. It's, I'm it's sorry. wild. It's wild yeah. that he was like, not my problem. I just, I also, it's just the idea that I mean, 1868, it's, we have, like, pictures, and there's, like, video coming out soon, and you have, like, modern America emerging, and you just it's have the U.S. military massacring 200 women and children. And that's not to say that, like, I couldn't imagine America being violent today. Like, that's not what I'm trying to say, but it's just still... It feels so barbaric. Yes, because mm-hmm. yeah, it is. I mean, it is. It's, it's barbaric. It feels it is, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It feels like something that shouldn't have happened in, like, something that we can mm-hmm. touch, you know? Um, so, yeah, there are no... 
prior reports of violence. So it's not like it, there was no evidence that they were acting in defense or anything like that. Um, it just seems that they were massacred. After this, Evans is like public, I don't know, approval ratings or whatever kind of, it seemed to decline, or I don't know if that's how we're writing history now or sure. whatever. He left that office in uh, 1865, so not very long after. He's there for what, two years? Three years. Three years. Okay. He was, he sworn, he got sworn in in April of 1962. 1862. 1862. I wrote 19 in like all of these. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, so Evans, questionable dude, obviously. He has some like cool history where he's like mental health needs to be recognized, but then it turns into an insane asylum and I'm not sure if the, mm-hmm. the people were being abused while he was there or not. It seems like he had some good intentions and then like things turned poorly and then he also played a big part in this massacre. Anyway. Um, what I want to talk about with Evans is in 1864, he helps fund, found the Colorado Seminary. And do you know what the Colorado Seminary becomes in 1880? I want to say Denver University because there's Denver University Seminary is on Evans Street right Mm -hmm. now. Okay. And there's Evans Chapel is the oldest building on campus. Man who is responsible for the active warfare Mm -hmm. of indigenous people in the state of Colorado specifically Mm -hmm. then starts a school for religious people of the cloth, like (laughs) pastors and priests. And that's what his legacy is. His legacy is Northwestern and Denver University. And Mm -hmm. he also had a legacy of like doing research to figure out that cholera is communicable, which it's like low key not. Like I saw something that was like, he also discovered this. And then I Googled, I was like, is cholera communicable? And the answer was like, not really. (laughs) So he discovered this, it was wrong, but he was the first one to think it. I don't want to like say like, you're a fucking idiot because it was the 1800s and like. John Evans is the topic of today or is it one thing that John Evans does? Uh, none of these. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to get to Denver University. We're in the prequel. Gotcha. Okay. I looked at Denver University, <laughs> was like, who founded Denver University? Because I was like, going to be like, Denver University founded in, and then I went down a whole fucking rabbit hole. Okay. And now we have John Evans. <laughs> um, so where are we? We're in the late, later half of the 1800s, and Colorado is about to get statehood in 1876. But before this happens, Colorado's in her, like, college era. Right. You know? Um, we have some more schools to establish. <laughs> Very quickly. So we're going to go back in time. I'm going to say some things that are like progressively going farther back in time until like the last one. And t- I have whatever. a guess. I'm not going to say okay, it, cool. but I have a guess. Um, you can say your guess after I say these things. Okay. okay. So in 1889, the governor signs the bill to create the Colorado State Normal School. Do you oh. know what that becomes? Uh-huh. See you, Boulder. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a joke about normal school. Mines? No. Oh. I have Regis? like four schools. No. This one, okay, so. <laughs> Sorry, is it private or public? Public. Mm-hmm. Is it just CU Denver? Mm-mm. CSU no. Fort no, no, Collins? No. Okay, we're going to stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, 1889, the governor signs the bill to create Colorado State Normal College. Teaching began in 19, or 1890. There are several name changes. Uh, Colorado State Normal, Coll- Normal School sorry, um, gets changed in 1911. Yeah, 1911 to Colorado State Teachers College. Okay. Do you know now? I mean, is it, is it CSU? No. Uh, in 1935, it becomes Colorado State College of Education. Then in 1957, it becomes Colorado State College. Is it University of Northern Colorado? Yes. Okay, I have a friend that teaches at a school up there called uh-huh. University Schools, mm-hmm. and it's a public school, and it just used to be whenever the university wanted to do an education experiment, they did it at University uh. Schools, which you sent your kids there. It was a public school. Yeah. Sometimes it was, like, really innovative stuff, but it was uh-huh. basically, like, the, the teacher college up in Greeley. That's what I know it do as. whatever. Yeah. I don't think it has that connection, at least not as strong anymore. All but of yes. the teachers that I know that, like, graduated from my high school all went to UNC. UNC, Yes. And so in 1970, it eventually becomes University of Northern Colorado. Before that, in 1876, another bill was signed to establish another university after much debate over where to put it. There were two cities competing for it, uh, Canyon City and Boulder. Uh, Colorado also happened to need a new prison. <laughs> and since, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. No. And since Canyon City already had one prison, they were like, let's just put them all there. Let's just keep prisons in, in Canyon there. City. And then the university will go to Boulder. Listen, and a reoccurring theme. Of course I know my friend who teaches yeah. at Canyon City. Hi, Bree. 
she's a patron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I breathe. Whenever I tell Sorry. you speech gossip yeah. and I'm like, we can't talk about this on the pod, it's because I don't want at least Brie and others to know. They think I'm nice. Do you mean me to cut that? No, that's okay. fine. Brie will find that funny. I also don't know how regularly she okay, listens, perfect, perfect. but. Okay, so Canyon City got the prison and Boulder C- got the university. I'm sorry. Little Grant lore needs to happen yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I lived in Monterey County, California for mm-hmm. my first year after college before I got to Denver. Yeah. And I lived in the town of Salinas, which was 30 minutes it 30 minutes to anything that you would want to do. <laughs> so 30 minutes south into mm-hmm. the valley, I would teach at the town of Soledad, at Soledad High School. Um, Soledad's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful community. Um, if you need gas, stop. I don't know if there's much else there. Because the only other yeah. thing in Soledad, Cal State Prison <laughs> Soledad. And so then you drive back to Salinas, you change, you drive 30 minutes to the west, Monterey Peninsula, Carmel by the Sea. California's crazy. It dude. really is. So when they'd shot Big Little Lies, yeah. they shot it on location in the Monterey Peninsula. And there were times where I was like, what? That's not a coffee shop. They sell clam chowder out of that place. <laughs> what is this lie? I know exactly the place you're talking <laughs> okay, about. It's a you. clam chowder shop. It is not I can, a coffee like, shop. Picture it in my head. <laughs> it's so funny. Sorry. Back to the story. Okay, so so yeah. Kane City gets another prison, and Boulder, which has nothing going for it, yeah, gets, gets what would Boulder. become CU Boulder. <laughs> that bill is signed in 1876. Teaching begins in 1877, and I want you to remember that year gap, right? It's I like don't. I'm gonna let year. you listen to this yeah. joke later in yeah, editing okay. and decide if you want to keep it or not. Yeah. I don't think it'll get me in trouble, but I'll let you decide later. Okay. It's been a long day. Um, we send kids to all sorts of different schools. The UNC kids are the most grounded. They're the ones that I'm most confident about, right? They know what mm-hmm. they want. They're being very practical about it. The CSU kids, they kind of got some charisma to them, right? It's like they're they're, they're going to be so fun at a cocktail party in yeah. four years. In my opinion, I don't think we've ever sent a kid to CU Boulder who had a regular relationship with their father. I really like how the closer you get to the mountains, the more unhinged schools become. Yeah. Because mine's is same the but different. Yeah. Um, okay, so teaching begins in 1877. The bill was signed for the school in 1876. Okay. There's a year. Uh, 1870, Colorado signs a bill to establish the Agricultural College of Colorado after Lincoln signs the Morrill Act in 1962. Grant, do you want to tell the people what the Morrill Act was? Yeah, this is actually super exciting. And correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. What year does Lincoln sign it in? Uh, 62, 61. 1861? Yeah. So the Morrill Act um, sets aside land for new states and territories Mm -hmm. to create public land grant universities. universities yep. That's what the phrase land grant means. They mm-hmm. were granted the land by the federal government yeah. to create a university. And a lot of these land grant universities, because they're being established in newer states, um, are focused heavily on agriculture. Yep. Unintentionally, your boy is repping. Went to a land grant university. Correct. <laughs> wearing a University of Nebraska yeah. shirt right now. Mm-hmm. Um, public land grant universities... <sighs> I just love Nebraska sometimes. Not a lot of times, but I sometimes. Nebraska, the University of Nebraska, I feel, has always been very clear-eyed about what its job is, mm-hmm. which is to prepare the workforce that the state needs. And so the University of Nebraska has obviously always had a strong agricultural program. Right. It has always, in my opinion, had a really strong education program. Um, and increasingly recently has some really cool stuff happening in like tech computer science industries yeah. as well, as more places relocate to to uh, cities like Lincoln and Omaha. And so public land grant universities, it's for all of us. Do you know Catch the which, fever. Uh, <laughs> CSU Fort Collins. Yeah, CSU yeah. Fort Collins. <laughs> I um, think at University of Nebraska, I think we had a building called Morrill Hall, if I remember oh, correctly. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this enabled states to create <laughs> land grant universities. And the first college commencement for uh, Agricultural College of Colorado occurred in 1884. So the bill was signed in 1870. College you gotta build it, hire the faculty. It's funny because these other two universities, University of Northern Colorado and CU, both like built a building and were like, we're open. We're a school. Yeah, and like <laughs> it seems like CSU was like, okay, let's think about this. Okay. <laughs> really Sheep quick. go there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, this college, Agricultural College of Colorado, also went through a couple name changes. Um, I didn't list all of them for whatever reason. In eight, uh, uh, 
Yes, in 1934, it was renamed to Colorado A&M, which stands for Agricultural and the Mechanical College. And then in 1957, it was renamed to what we know it as now, Colorado State University. So, in 1874, a bill was signed to establish the Territorial School of Mines, which would then become <laughs> the Colorado School of Mines, when Colorado would become a state in 1876. I want to reach back and just grab one of your bells, but I don't know if they're decorative and I don't trust they're, myself. They're regular and they have cut me. Okay, so I'm not going to touch <laughs> no, it. They, <laughs> no, they give you those bells to like ring at graduation and I had them on like two fingers and mm. I was like doing All this. All excited to have graduated. Yeah, and then they like kept, it kept like hitting me right there. No, they're, they're both fine. You can pick them up if you want. But um, so this... College was suggested by pioneers in the mining industry, like W.A.H. Loveland. Love it. Yes. Oh, is the town of Loveland named after him? No. Yes. Yes. And probably <laughs> Loveland Ski Resort. What's so frustrating to me personally is I meet all but one of the requirements to have a town, street, or university named after me here in Colorado. Uh, I'm a bald, bearded white dude. The only thing I don't qualify as is Money. alive in the 1870s. <laughs> Okay, you got real excited. I don't have money either, but I think it's funny. You could have let me finish the sentence. It's funnier when we say it at the same time, and it's different. Oh, you're poor. I am not alive. Anyway, it's whatever. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, suggested by pioneers in the mining industry, like W. H. Love, W. A. H. Loveland, E. L. Berthed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Berthed Pass. Pass, and also on the mines campus, there's a building called Berthed that is like so old that it's like mildly problematic, but we can't tear it down because it is a mon or it's sure. like a historical building. Can I say there's a certain element too, and this is in part because we talked about uh, mm -hmm. the Sand Creek massacre. Yeah. I think about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, just how much we wrote over the history of this land between the years of 1860 and 1900. And you can tell that the universities are starting to like recognize that and be more Grapple proactive in that. Like I know Mines is doing this and I at least saw this on I think most of the websites that I looked at for these colleges today where they have the public or the indigenous land acknowledgement like right. forefront before you even can talk about or right. see them. And Which so, isn't like, enough but is a it's step not that we weren't doing 10 years ago. Exactly even. and it's like something like that where it's like someone at least. Right. And obviously I think you kind of like understand even if you haven't connected all the dots together you understand that but in this retelling and i'm excited for yeah. what i think we're going to i think you i think i have an idea probably um do. but in hearing it listed this way yeah it's like oh wow yeah we okay we just yeah, papered we just really, over everything yeah after committing legit genocide against the indigenous mm -hmm. people that had lived here uh, yep and so <laughs> el bertha so suggested pioneers by the mining industry uh, Loveland, Berthoud, Arthur Lakes, um, our library uh, on the Mines campus is Arthur Lakes Library. George West, I don't know if he's anything named after him. His name is very generic. Generic. And Episcopal Bishop George M. Randall, who was the primary founder, from what I can tell. And I was really hoping he would have a juicier past, like <laughs> more gossip and more like shitty things that I could be like, God, fuck this guy. And I could not find like really anything, <clears throat> which was annoying. But he was a bishop and I mean, connected to mining? Yeah, so like. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I literally, I Googled him <laughs> in every combination of words and all of them like didn't, were like, do I'm you want I'm sorry if this is sacrilegious, grave? but the passing the plate just not work out for the Colorado diocese? They're like, well, if we just go and get the gold ourselves. <laughs> it is crazy to think of a bishop involved in mining. It, it is. I don't think what I've said is sacrilegious. No, That's like, not what your job you're supposed to have. I Googled his name and like one of the top <laughs> things that came up that wasn't related to mines was like literally... Um, I don't Episcopal like website that just listed a bunch of missionaries yeah. and like a, like two sentences about what they did and I was like, what? <laughs> like you are partially responsible for founding the school, right? Um. Anyway, George M. Randall had been given the land for a university in 1868. He had wanted something in Denver, but had been given something out by Golden. He had already opened Jarvis Hall Collegiate School in 1870. In 1873, mines opened under the Episcopal Church, and then in 1874, when the bill was signed, it then became the Territorial School of Mines. And then when Colorado became a state, it became Colorado School of Mines. I couldn't find when teaching began. The <laughs> diploma, <Hell> first yeah. <laughs> diploma was awarded in 1883. And so if they followed the trend of the other schools that started teaching the year after, that would have been 
a lot of years. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, at also, like so eight funny, years. What's so funny to me, too, is that Denver University and the seminary that Evan sounds yeah. is the furthest south out of all of those. And Denver is geographically decidedly in the center. The other one that I didn't cover um, is Colorado College that I think was founded around, the, around the same time. Yeah, as Colorado School of Mines, but it was founded in the Springs. I just, I wanted to talk about schools that I knew. Sure. So. <laughs> and then those were, those four or five schools were the schools that were founded. And then the next school that was founded, I think was um, the Air Force Academy. Oh, sure. And that wasn't until like the 1950s or something like that. Oh. I could be wrong. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But um, so these early colleges would have a lot of rivalries with each other. Um, some of these last into today. Like CSU and Air Force. Or CSU and CU Boulder. <laughs> sure, but that's a more that's, competitive game, the CSU Air Force yes. one. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, C- Go Rams. If I had to fall on the somewhere on that, I mean... CU and CSU don't even, like, compete in the same division no. normally. They're Division One in football, but uh, one's in Power 5 and the other it's one's just not. not. Sorry. good. Y'all, I know you know me as, like, the fun, interesting, hot, also, sexy, okay. fascinating, sh- 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 wealthy... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> good. I'm glad that's still funny to you. Um gay podcaster but i'm he actually loves college so football. butch when it comes to college football yeah. and then for two weeks in march college basketball <laughs> <laughs> honestly though kind of same yeah i, I could get everyone. behind college basketball second time tonight catch the fever <laughs> <laughs> okay so every year day. sorry go ahead. every year we see the rocky mountain showdown okay. which is the football game between where cu inevitably crushes csu in a football game so this tradition started in 1893 and since then do you want to guess what the like streak has been is how many games cu and csu have won so hold on is it like how many times they have played each other how, like what's the winning streak like 14 uh, three or whatever like what's the official yeah, record like, so when was the first game played give me the date again 1893 there have been two ties okay so what we're looking at like 100 to 110 games no they're okay let me do the math really quick hold on <laughs> Yeah, 100 games. Okay, there's been 100 games. Then I'm guessing CU Boulder, Colorado, Mm -hmm. has won 65% of the time. That's really close. Is it? Yeah, 68 to 22. (laughs) I'm sorry. 68 to 22. Mm -hmm. And then two ties. So CSU wins just enough to keep it interesting, but not enough for it to be a true parody rivalry. Yeah, if you look through the, like, winnings, it's like CU, 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 Do not tempt. Oh, they went to overtime this year. I don't care. Yeah, because Colorado was on a winning streak, and CSU pushed them to overtime, and everyone was like, wow, great year for CSU. No, it turns out, bad year for CU. Uh, (laughs) I'll say, I'm sorry, I don't know how many Denver listeners we have. Um, I, yeah, I just love, I just love football. I get it. So, before our school rivalries took the form of a football game, they would often take the form of campus pranks, oftentimes related to football. But that's besides the point. Okay. Um, And this wasn't limited to Colorado. This was like all universities kind of around this time. And today, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Georgia Tech and Auburn have a rivalry that dates back to before 1896. Georgia Tech and Georgia have a rivalry together Mm -hmm. that uh, is just called good old fashioned hate. (laughs) Yeah, that's the name of the game. And um, Georgia Tech also is uh, the honoree winner of the title most lopsided win in college football. Will you allow me 30 seconds to tell you the story? So um, this is back in like 1895, like early days sports. Georgia Tech has a like scholarship football program Mm -hmm. and they're playing a team that dissolved their football program a year ago, but were uh, like contractually obligated to to play Georgia Tech. And... And so instead of losing the money, they just like fielded a team of like athletes from this school mm-hmm. who then went off to play Georgia Tech. But the problem is Georgia Tech's uh, football coach was also their baseball coach. And mm-hmm. they had lost Georgia Tech a lopsided game to this team. Mm-hmm. So the Georgia Tech football coach was like, we're going to eat their lunch. And the final score was, correct me here, but this is roughly what it was, 110 to 0. That's hysterical. Yeah, it's also it's it's basically considered a permanent record because the rules of the game make it basically impossible, impossible to, do that, to again. do that again. There are some wins like that that I'm about to talk about. Oh, good, okay. Uh, so Georgia Tech... Wait, we're doing football? You're doing a football episode for me? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mentioned it several times. Okay. Much to my chagrin, I want you to know. I 
I was typing this and I was like, oh, fuck. Grant's going to love this. Yeah. So Grant, or sorry, Grant, Georgia Hi. Tech. <laughs> Georgia Tech and Auburn had a rivalry earlier than 1896. Um, but we're going to talk about the game that happens in 1896. Okay. Auburn was set to play Georgia Tech in um, their first ever home game. So it was the first ever home game Auburn was hosting. And before this, Auburn had beat Georgia Tech 96 to 0. <laughs> uh, Auburn knew that Georgia Tech would be coming in by train. So they greased about 400 yards of the rails. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> on either side of the station with pig grease and lard and soap. Did they cause a train derailment? No, no. What happens is, what? That, is that the train cannot stop <laughs> at Auburn's train station, and it just fucking keeps going, babes. <laughs> and so the Georgia Tech team, once the train can stop, just has to deboard. You gotta love 1896 for just having access to that much pig lard. So readily <laughs> yeah. available. Georgia Tech <laughs> had to walk back to town <laughs> carrying all of their gear, and they still, and obviously, they lost 45 to 0. Okay, okay. Um, Georgia Tech. Nothing says, like, I feel confident about winning this game, like, Let's cheat. Yeah, and the article that I read was like, maybe they weren't prepared. Maybe they just did not have the energy after not sleeping and then having to walk back. Maybe it's Maybelline. Yes. <laughs> Georgia Tech then refused to play Auburn the next year. Oh, until, the cheaters? Yeah, yeah, I could imagine. Until the API assured them that there would be no shenanigans under threat of being expelled on either side, on either side if they did. Um, to commemorate this, Georgia Tech began the... Rec Tech Pajama Parade, a symbolic reenactment of Georgia Tech's pajama clad march to their train station. <laughs> and in the days of the parade, Auburn would host a pep rally oh. at the end of this parade where they all wore their pajamas. I just want to say, like, let's ditch our phones in six months. What are we doing? You know, That's, it's this. Unfortunately, this pajama parade has been discontinued because people got too rowdy uh, at the train station couldn't imagine. and caused real crimes. Um, an Auburn story? Sorry, it's actually also a tree story. Oh, I love it. Um, Auburn beat, I believe, Alabama in one okay. of their games. And when Auburn and Alabama play, that's called the Iron Bowl, even though it's just a yes. regular season game. And on Auburn's campus, there are these two really old trees that when you beat Alabama, you throw toilet paper over. Well, one disgruntled Bama fan <gasps> was so mad that he poisoned the roots of those two trees. That's sad. Those two trees didn't deserve Men it. Men will literally poison the No, 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 no. Men will literally jeopardize the water table. <gasps> oh, my God! The man poured so much pesticide down the trees. The EPA had to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> also, this story happened like three years ago. The EPA was like, it's not in 1896. Bro. It's pajamas in Atlanta over here. No, it's like iPhone 12, how to kill tree. <laughs> he dumped so much pesticide on it. He almost poisoned the soil of downtown, whatever town Auburn's in. <laughs> Bama or Auburn? It's an, uh, so, ba so Auburn is in Alabama. Oh. But I don't know what, I don't know if the town's called Auburn or, or oh, okay, whatnot. Okay, yeah. I know Auburn's in West Alabama mm -hmm. because, sorry, is in East Alabama because when Alabama plays Auburn, they say that they're going to West Georgia. They don't <laughs> even recognize it as part of their state. Gross. I'm sorry that I know this much about football. What am I supposed to do with it unless I'm trying it's to impress to a man this. on a date? Or talk to Maya about it. There's something about taking a man to a vegan restaurant and then talking about college football that says, I can do what Whatever. That's literally why I will tell people pridefully that I was born in 98 when they've just told me that they were working in the industry in 98 and then immediately order a whiskey on the rocks yeah. or neat and yeah. just drink it in their face. It's the duality of the it's girls. It's the duality. And it's just, the duality. just be like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, you didn't I, know? Would, I would love the vegan chicken and waffles. And also, let me talk to you about the first football game I ever went to. You and right. me are the same in weird so ways. So many <laughs> Good, 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 excellent, good, good. Uh, so, what I really want to talk to you about. Good, an hour in. What's the topic, Maya? <laughs> I also love that this is probably a short episode today. It was until about a couple hours ago. Okay, so it, um, this whole story will take us back to John Evans' okay. own campus 
Um, he's not there anymore, obviously. It's 1919. Is it called Denver University, or is it still the seminary school? Did not do a deep dive into that. Could not tell uh, you. Fascinating that that's where the deep dive didn't go. Whoops. <laughs> I'm pretty I sure. No, I'm pretty sure it is DU. DU. I think it is so DU. Denver University, aka DU, exists. In 1919. Okay. Yes. At this time, DU was known as the Ministers or the Fighting Pastors. <laughs> Horrible mascot, by okay. the way. Um, Their mascot now is the Pioneers, yes. which is problematic for different reasons. Very different reasons. Go yes. Pios. Or fighting pastors. Like, <laughs> what? Because the Crusades were so successful. <laughs> like, um, at this point, they had 1,800 students and 120 faculty members, and tuition was... $150. Boo. <laughs> Which, Who are you? John Brown's husband? No, sorry. What? Molly Brown. <laughs> so many Browns. Who are you, Molly Brown? Who could afford that in 1911? <sighs> yeah. Which, uh, if you do the regular inflation calculator, right. $2,674. Boo. Almost violently boo. That upsets me. Yeah, that's me. Uh, upsetting. If they stopped building spires topped with copper, they could keep tuition affordable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm bitter because my student loans weren't canceled today. It's fine. I turned on CNN and they were like, Biden canceled however much of student debt. Check right. your email. And I refreshed it and I was like, refresh it again. You had to be paying for 10 years. I know, but I was Did you take sick. out your student loans when you were 14? No, I didn't hear that aspect of it until oh, like an no. hour later. There's one downside to youth. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to laugh for a second. Do you? Just, normally youth don't, don't have like taste or, you know, but you have great taste and normally don't have hobbies. You have hobbies and you're in like a great shape at 25, which is really hard to do. Okay. I got to hit you on something. And the fact that you're not eligible for student loan relief is a really funny Sorry. angle. I, I can't be complaining that much. I got pretty, I had a trust fund that covered most of my college tuition. I don't even have any kind of context for the sentence that you just said. And I went to a public land grant university. No, I still have student loans, but I got very lucky. I'm very privileged. I, luckily, my great grandmother like put enough money aside and it covered most of my college tuition but there is still some and I'm just angry about it okay. now. Um, <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Uh, <laughs> Talk to me about the pious. Yes. Uh, DU at this point is not unfamiliar with campus pranks. For example, at some point they got a cow in University what? Hall. That is all the information I could find. <laughs> I want you to know. Cow in hall. I've been doing a really good job of not interrupting, but I'm going to go ahead and interrupt. Uh, one of the pranks... Roll the tape back. <laughs> <laughs> I meant in general, not this episode. <laughs> um, one of the pranks that I think was really funny, that you'll see sometimes for mm -hmm. senior pranks, is they release pigs in a school. And then number them. One, two, and but, four. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're uh -huh. all on the same page. Yes. Others were not as innocent... As that, which I think the cow would disagree, <laughs> but uh, uh, on the DU campus, a member of the Beta fraternity stuffed a sophomore named Joseph Horry in, or sorry, yeah, no, it's Horry. I looked it up because I was like, my, you can't say that without right. actually, it, it is Horry, uh, into a coffin like wooden crate, nailed top shut, wrapped the box in rope, summoned a freight service to deliver him to a female student in the woman's dormitory. I'm sorry, they mailed someone? Alive? Yes, in a crate. <laughs> How do you not make news as soon as you hear health? Okay, there's a this lot of questions. This was still in the eight, like late 1800s. And we're about to cover some worse shit. Okay, I'm going to hold it then. I'm going to yeah. hold it. But how do you not hear him talking to a mailman? Like, how thick is this coffin they put you in? I bet he I bet he was being hazed and they were like, mm, you got to go through with it. You got to go into yeah. this. You got to risk being buried alive. And that's how you know your brother. <laughs> Fraternities today also, <laughs> by the way. Okay, so early in the morning on November 4th, 1919, Several small explosives were heard on the Denver campus. When the noise was investigated, all that was found were posters saying, get DU, and then what? Give them hell. No damage was reported beyond this. Wait, that's their smack talk? Get DU, and then what? And they're asking themselves that question? Give, Give them, them hell. hell. Yeah. So <laughs> after they've committed arson? Not what? even arson. I don't even think this. I think explosions count as arson. Okay, no buildings were harmed <laughs> okay. in the making of this prank. Okay. Uh, however, 
Uh, at 4.15 a.m. on November 6th, 1919, four blasts of dynamite explosions went off on the DU campus. Residents thought it was an earthquake. It shook the beds in Templin Hall, which was one of the dormitories, which I think was the female dormitory, which means that that was where the crate with the man was delivered. Um, it blew out a hundred windows in between the University Hall, the Iliff School of Theology, Carnegie Library, and the Memorial Chapel. The shockwave literally cracked the University Hall walls. Oh. To this day, if you go to University Hall, you can still see the metal uh, like boxes that they use to cover the steel pins that keep the wall together. Oh, this is at DU. This is at DU, okay. yeah. Um, so who's responsible? Do you have M any idea? Mines. Yes. The school with explosives. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the posters that I mentioned earlier, what I didn't tell you is that the, is that the posters actually read uh, get do you and then what? Give them hell mines. Like, give them hell mines. Okay. Um, so you see. So they commit a crime and they're like, it was us. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, mines. Meanwhile, do you see them? They're like, we're in the middle of a weird abduction <laughs> hazing and you're going to hit us with a different crime? We just found a cow in that hall that you just blew up. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we shouldn't allow women on universities. Things blow up near them. Exactly. Um, so you see, Mines had seen a report in the Denver Post that there was a plot by DU to repaint Mines's beloved M to DU's color of crimson. Okay. Um, and so Mines students decided to retaliate first. DU claimed that the report was false, but by the time they claimed it was false, ball was already rolling. Um, can... You're going to join me, but yes. um, men will literally commit to acts of terrorism before they go to therapy, repaint a room yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the end. Uh, <laughs> so fortunately, there were no injuries on campus. Like no one was harmed okay. actively uh, in all. There were five clutches of 25 dynamite sticks each. Uh, one of these clutches failed to detonate, however. So there was only four four explosions. Um, there's a report by Nine News that says, quote, two and a half pounds of dynamite will get your attention. That's enough explosive to turn an SUV into a convertible. Oh, I just blow the top off. That's what I told him to do when I got a haircut for the you first blow time. The top, blow get the top off, off. Blow the top off. <laughs> So, and I'm not sure if this is true, I wouldn't be shocked if it was, but I also couldn't find another source to back this up. The DU article said, quote, DU's arch rival was the School of Mines, where students so often rode through golden firing revolvers and dropping sticks of dynamite for fun that the newspapers started calling them, quote, blasters and dynamiters instead of ore diggers. I could not find another source to back any of that up. Okay. Um, Isn't blasting an important part of mining, though? Yes. We okay. are called the blasters now, but right. I didn't see anywhere that said the origin was mine students dropping dynamite Occasionally everywhere. Occasionally grenading the yeah, town of Golden. Um, the School of Mines has a source that said uh, the term blaster had been used on and off since the 1930s and it wasn't official until 1951. Um, so I don't know if that's true. It was pretty funny. Okay, yeah. I love it. Uh, this is University <laughs> Hall, the hall that is oh. now, uh, it's still alive, but um, has was blown up So this bit. is on DU? This is DU's campus. That's University yes. Hall. Mm -hmm. God, that's a gorgeous building though. It is very pretty. Um, okay, so, oh Jesus, okay. Do you students, pissed, right, <laughs> indignant as they say, uh, one such student was Ralph Gibson, who was the fullback on the football team who was studying dentistry. Nice fullbacks, kind of famous like beast of men. They're yes. the biggest ones on the field a lot of times. I didn't know that. And he's studying and dentistry. Learned... Yeah, that was. <laughs> uh, he had survived World War One, oh. the Spanish flu, <laughs> and was not about to be taken out by some fucking engineering nerds. <laughs> That's my words, not any, not any news <laughs> No, report. I could see that. I could see it. I think there's a lot of unchanneled rage in yeah, that generation. His son is interviewed in this article, and his son was like, he survived World War I and the <laughs> Spanish flu. <laughs> this is also about to be the highlight of his life, because what's up next? The Great Depression. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's what, that's what makes history no, so fun. So true. That's what makes history so fun. Sometimes I dissociate In the, the highlight of his career, he'll graduate with a degree, and then in the highlight of his career, which will be in about 15 years yeah. later, Great Depression. Depression. Yep. <laughs> that was a great snap, too, in my way. I'm that proud was of really it. Good. Thank you. Um, so, Ralph's son, James, remembers hearing stories about this whole event from his dad. He said, quote, students figured it was up to them to exact payments for the offense against the University of Denver. 
and then separately quote dad was a pretty tough guy <laughs> yeah no shit um Ralph and his comrades or friends hired a car and drove to Golden with, quote, vengeance in Ooh, mind. Love it. Good. Go if something enough. happened Go like that to it. my school, I'd be like, yeah. My school once lost to uh, Troy uh, seven years ago, and we didn't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, literally, like at this point now, I'd be like, and the, I want the bus to hit me too. <laughs> Like, what? Um, Take me, bus. <laughs> Take me. Um, so their plan was to go to Golden and repaint the M. So like, the plan was to do what they were accused, accused of, doing. of doing. They're like, Boo, fuck be you. Be more creative. Go to the women's dorm. They'll also, have better ideas. <laughs> literally. Also, by the way, the mine's M that they want to replace, which I'll tell you more about in a second, is 104 by 107 feet Pretty on big. top of a mountain. Okay. With zero trees around it. Yeah, no fucking trees. Um, I'll put a picture here of the M. Um, And so the M was established, I think shortly before this, probably in the late 1800s. It was when some uh, of the early students went up with rocks and then made the shape of an M on the top of Mount Zion, which is right next to Lookout Mountain. And then they eventually painted it white, eventually added lights. And now there's this huge M on the top of this mountain. And every year it's a tradition or hazing, however you want to put it, (laughs) um, where it's actually very sweet. I actually really like it. Um, You bring the goal is they ask all of the incoming students to bring a 10 pound rock from their hometown. Okay. And then we do the M climb, which is right before students start classes and everyone hikes up this mountain and it's very slow. Like it, no one from out of state is going to be like put out by it. Right. Uh, it's very slow. You get like you learn the school fight song on the way up, and you like s- see all of the different clubs. All the clubs like sign up to like be on the road. Have like a booth. Have like a booth, and then you get like sprayed with water because it's still like August, and sure. then they like ask you to like scream the theme or the uh, fight song. You get up to the M, you put your rock on the M, and then they whitewash the whole thing, and you often also get whitewashed, and you're wearing your hard hats that you get with your class, <laughs> and then. When you graduate, you guys love a theme. <laughs> yeah, when you graduate, you get to go up and do the reverse M climb, which is where you go up and then you take a rock and then bring it home. And Casey and I's rock is off yeah, screen somewhere. It's right there. Um, but it, the idea is that everyone brings something to mines and everyone takes something away, and it doesn't need like neither. No one gets the same rock they left with. You once told one. me. A major issue. Yeah. So, Is that talked about in this episode? No, Go ahead. I'll, I was going to talk about it, though. Go ahead. Uh, I didn't write any of this down. So I wasn't sure if this it. was where it was going. No. So Mines uh, is a pretty notoriously difficult engineering school. It's it's ranked up there. Right. Uh, and so we... That's not her bragging. Every person I've met in Denver from Mines is like, yeah, so then like for four years I cried every night. Yeah. And now I make a pretty decent Someone salary. Someone commented on one of our Instagram <laughs> yes. that was like, I saw a Mines t-shirt one time. Yeah. Way more than one person have yeah. commented. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so the dropout rate is is high. Right. Uh, and so if you do the math, that means more people are bringing up rocks than <laughs> taking down rocks. And also some seniors don't take down rocks. And so the M is structurally unstable. <laughs> and so every couple of years... Much like most of the juniors and seniors yes, at Mines. Literally. Uh, every once in a while, uh, we ha- they have to go up and do something called Save the M, <laughs> where they go up with like a big, a couple big trucks and then people take down Removes a certain amount of rocks <laughs> until the rock, until the M is like kind of stable. using it to build like a new building on campus or something. I don't know what they do with it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that's fun. Uh, the light strings, though, are really cool. because the, So there's lights around the M, but there's an organization on campus called Blue Key that like kind of manages all the traditions and stuff sure. of campus. And then they'll go up for like uh, big events like E-Days and Homecoming and rearrange the lights or like add new light strings to like paint pictures or like make pictures of whatever the theme of that year's event is. My favorite thing, though, is that every year for graduation, whether it be in the winter or the spring, they do a countdown from like eight or something like or ten or whatever to graduation day. Oh, fun! Yeah, it's fun until you think about the fact that there are people that maybe don't realize that there's a college there, and now there's a big thing countdown. that's usually an M, <laughs> and suddenly in red it's counting down, and you're like, to what? I also imagine walking around on campus, being stressed out by finals, and looking up on the hill, and it's like four days. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, mine's, that's an experience. Um, thrives off of stress a little bit. Uh, anyway, um, so... And dynamite. Yeah, and dynamite. Uh, 
so Ralph Gibson, the dentistry student that survived World War One, and the, the Spanish DU flu, student. the DU yes. student, yeah, sorry, uh, drives to Golden. Their plan was to repaint this M. It's huge. It's a big boy. Like right. you could, I could probably see it from Denver if I was like in the right spot to like get a good view of it. And as Nine News put it in their article, quote, <laughs> big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, fun fact about the M that I didn't know, actually. The M is the nation's second oldest mountainside monument. It's older than Mount Rushmore. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I could not find for the life of me what the oldest cliffside or mountainside monument is. Yeah. Don't know. Um, I have one guess. I'm going to hold on one second. Yeah, good luck Googling it. I tried for like several hours. Um, what so, year was the M put up? So it was designed in 1905, established in 1908. Um, what are you thinking it is? I don't want to say it out loud. Is it either Crazy Horse or Stone Mountain? It is Stone Mountain Stone in Mountain Georgia. Not, yeah. Oh, okay. Those were the other two I could find. So I couldn't find the <laughs> oldest, but Mount Rushmore was built from 1927 to 1941 in South Dakota. Obviously, a lot of controversy behind this. Right. Crazy Horse Monument was started in 1948, and it is not finished Still yet. Still under construction. Yeah, because yeah. we're bad at what we do, I guess. Uh, and it, that's also in South Dakota. Stone uh, Mountain Monument began in the 1910s and finished in 1972. So it oh, is wow. around that same time, okay. but just later. Uh, South Dakota got Mount Rushmore because a president went on vacation to South Dakota. And South Dakota was like, we have this crazy plan and it's going to be great and also helps tourism. And they had to prove to the president, I forget who it was at the time, that... Um, Tourism to South Dakota was a good thing, and this president loved fishing. So every morning, the South Dakota like government stocked this lake <laughs> so full that he would of get fish. a bunch of fish, and he was just like best fishing of my life. And they had put so many That's fish so in this lake, funny. like ecologically, it could not support that much fish. <laughs> But they, capacity. but they got what they wanted. I also saw while I was Googling this, the like what they wanted Mount Rushmore to look like. There's like a miniature version of it mm. in some museum. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they kept it the way that yeah, it is. Yeah, they stopped when they decided <laughs> to go. Also, fun fact about Stone Mountain Monument. Super Which is controversial. in Georgia. In right. Georgia. It's wrong. We can say wrong. It's wrong. Uh, it's a Confederate yep. monument. Depicts Confederate, quote, war heroes. And is really, really uh, controversial, uh, not just because it depicts Confederate war heroes, but because William J. Simmons held the founding of the KKK there in mm -hmm. 1915, and it was also used for rituals long afterwards. So that's cool. Anyway, the M. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the people that went to paint it obviously misjudged how long this would take. Okay. They did not leave Denver until mid-morning. Oh, Amateurs. Been there, done that, though. Amateurs. Any road trip I take, that if is If you me. go into the mountains now, if you're going to ski, you cannot be <laughs> on I-70 into the mountains past 7 a.m. No, no, no. You gotta be fully on it you already. You gotta be, like, in the mountains What, did you land at DIA that morning? Yeah. Get up there. Get up there, <laughs> babes. Uh, yeah, so they only managed to partially finish repainting the M before okay. they were caught. Right. Um, Mines was expecting this. Because apparently they're not... It's why they committed terrorism. Yeah. Also because apparently all of the other schools, when they're trying to like prank them or whatever... The will, first thing they go for is the, the M. The first thing they go for is the M. So they had a telescope. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a villain. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Set up to keep watch <laughs> of the M to make sure no shenanigans... That's a hazing ritual. <laughs> yeah. I want to know who was in charge. Um, and by this time, actually, I found out mine's was first... Female graduates still happened in the late 1800s. Oh, wow. Which yeah. I did not expect because even when I went there, I was one of few. So it's nominally co ed. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so to catch the DU students, Mines barricaded the road off the mountain. And what you need to know about this. <clears throat> The, about this road that goes up to the M is that there is one road. There is one road that leads up and then it like lets you out in a very different spot on I-70 coming down the mountain. <laughs> like you can't get up, the, like it's, there's yes. one in, one out. And I, I have a feeling there probably wasn't the out at sure. that point. Um, so they barricaded the mountain. There was reports that there were shots fired, but all the reports also said they might have been blanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, a quote from Ralph's son, James, said, quote, they were sneaky, but not sneaky enough. <laughs> sure. They did it in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, my students then dressed up the DU students in prisoner of war overalls. Oh. Shaved their heads. Oh. <laughs> 
and painted large M's onto their scalp slash forehead with silver nitrate. Silver nitrate yeah. takes months to wear <sighs> off. <laughs> it's, is it painful? I don't think so. Okay. I, probably a little bit. It's a caustic chemical, so I can imagine it probably hurt a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a quote, I think, from the Nine News article, or maybe the DU article. I can't. I can't remember. Anyway, quote, the DU students were going to be walking advertisements for the School of Mines for six or seven months. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the difference between CU and Col- or DU and Colorado School of Mines. Both of the articles from both schools covered the, the event like relatively accurately, like to the same point. There is only a few discrepancies. Um, when I read the DU article, I was like, okay, I need to look up what silver nitrate is. When I read the Colorado School of Mines article, it just immediately told me what silver nitrate is. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is it's used to dye. If you've ever looked under a microscope in science class, it's what they use to dye the like cells or whatever so that you can clearly see them. Okay. That's silver nitrate. Um, the DU students were then placed under a, quote, heavy guard in various fraternity houses after being paraded through downtown Golden as prisoners of Shut intercollegiate they war. They didn't let them go? They do let them go that evening. They're, all, they're held captive for less than a day. But yes. Oh, my God. They were paraded through Golden like, look what we caught. I wonder if Golden's ever like, oh, my God, it's the mine skits again. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, CSM. Uh, Cars Gold Mines also lured a reporter of the Denver Post, Bill Bliss, uh, to Colorado School of Mines with the promise of a big story. If you'll remember, the Denver Post is the one that ma- made Mines falsely believe that DU was planning on doing, doing this, this earlier. Right. Uh, they had no big story for Bill Bliss. They just did the same things to him that they did to the DU what? students. They didn't shave his head or do the silver nitrate, but they did make him put on... Imprison him? Yeah, they did put him in the prisoner of war overalls and parade him through. These people had grudges and time. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Everyone was released that same evening, and then James says, quote, I'm sure he was upset, him being Ralph, obviously, um, but I don't think greatly so. He was relatively good-natured and took the punishment the same way. So I think Mm. from what he says, it was like, yeah, we got caught. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The reporter, Bill Bliss, was sent back with a warning to stop their slanderous reporting. Uh, This is from one of the articles. If the the Post's owners didn't, quote, cease their slurring attacks, the miners would give the proprietors a taste of the clowning they gave the reporter. Hysterical. Okay. Um, Today, this incident could result in charges of kidnapping, false imprisonment, right. conspiracy, vandalism, weapons violations, and assault. Federal jail time. Oh, yeah. Big Imagine time. a university just being like, okay, this public road is closed off now so we can check, catch some college students. Bigger problem, a lot of mining strikes were happening around this town. <laughs> and the militia had been summoned to a lot of these towns, and they weren't allowing rifles, which the mine students had. <laughs> <laughs> The governor had bigger fish to fry, why is was, what I'm saying. Why have the mines always been able to play by their own rules? I don't know. Okay. We're smarter. Oh, sure. Spoken like a mines graduate. Thank you. <laughs> I, you didn't, my I didn't go was, through that for nothing. You think my Nebraska talk is excessive. <laughs> um, so two days after this whole affair, DU and mines are scheduled to face off in football because it always comes back to football. I mean, I get it. <laughs> so, quote... Uh, This is a quote from the Post, quote, never before has the bitter feeling between the schools reached the blood heat that is rife now. Late Friday night, representatives of the two schools met and agreed there would be no fighting to leave it entirely in the hands of the football team. So they were like, go boys, (laughs) work out your problems. Who will slam their bodies against each other. Yes. um, The Denver's chief of police threatened to cancel the game if any trouble erupted. Nice. And the DU trustees had talks um, of severing athletic ties with mines after this. They were Uh, like- Oh, we got trouble here in River City. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, the we cha- will never play you in a sport again. You're such poor people to play against. <laughs> and the DU chancellor favored settling things on the football field. Sure. What a fucking white man thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> They'll work it out, they're boys. It's all right. They're just going through something. Many yeah. of them have untreated PTSD from their time in the war. <laughs> this is exactly what they need. You look at my face and tell me that is not at least <laughs> one of the gas in this fire right now. It's at least true for Ralph. Well, here's what we did to the Krauts, okay? So we let them get into the 
and then we got, got him. him. And then we gassed him with silver nitrate. Yeah. Silver <laughs> nitrate. <laughs> Not sure that's how that works. I don't but, think it is how it works. Uh, it would be funny though. It seems like something a dentistry student it would do. It sounds like a lot of people who should have absolutely had the ability to talk to somebody didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I love a prank. <laughs> I love this. I love a prank. Um, the DU chancellor also predicted that DU would exact revenge for the dynamiting that occurred on the DU campus. Not the nitrate on their heads. Okay. Like all the the quote was like for the dynamite. <laughs> what? Um, quote by grinding the mines to brick dust on the grid iron. Bro, okay. oh, calm down. <laughs> Gross. Um, game day was snowy and miserable, which is fun. What uh, what month is it that they're playing in? Uh, November. It's back when we got snow in November. That's yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, not to be too, but, but you know. No, yeah. Quote, <laughs> snow made fast playing almost impossible, fumbling frequent, and the field goals out of the question, is a quote from one of the news sources that covered the game. So funny, nowadays, during a snowy game, sometimes field goals are the only sports Only thing source. you can do. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, quote, this is another quote. Uh, harder fought battles haven't been seen in Denver, <laughs> nor cleaner games. Uh, this person also noted that penalties were few, sportsmanship abundant, sideline cheers good-natured, and the, quote, bitter destructive feeling between the two schools not exhibited, even though both teams, quote, flew at each other like hungry, devouring beasts. Hot. I'm kidding. <laughs> I just haven't done that in months. Hot again. Hot, thank you. Um, <laughs> his na- the guy who wrote that is from the Denver Post, and his name is... Rick Ricketson. I hate it so <laughs> much. So many of these names. Mike Mike Sell and Rick Ricketson. That's the only thing about I know history is real, but the only thing that ever even has me kind of a little bit like, no, it's not, is stuff like Rick that. Rick Ricketson. Yeah. Um, that game ended in a 0 0 tie. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, hysterical. Uh, The following day, after that game, a powder charge blew off about 20 square feet of Mines's M. See, here, yeah, see, yeah. So they're all going to be distracted at the game, yeah? But that's when we sneak up to the game. And then I went to pieces! <laughs> Luckily, though, uh, <laughs> Sorry, because of the snow, the, DU, the mine students were not able to catch the DU students who did this. Um, and then this is a quote. But for the fact that the perpetrators did not know how to place the charge, the famous mine's M on Mount Zion would have been destroyed. So, in other words, if they had gone to mines, they'd know how to appropriately destroy the mines M. But they went to DU, so they Don't didn't. Don't try and out-stupid engineers, <laughs> my brother. <laughs> That's, it's just so Well, funny. see, if we don't know how to, we'll just pack it with too much dynamite. And put it right all in one place. <laughs> and that'll blow it off. I love that the mine students also were like, ha, idiots. <laughs> We totally would have destroyed our M better if you had given us the chance. Yeah. Um, Mine students after this contemplated kidnapping DU students to come and do the manual labor to repair the M. What the fuck is wrong with this university? It was rejected, though. Okay, good. I'm glad someone was like, I don't know, I think forced labor is a step too far. Um, Mine students at this point, though, armed themselves with rifles and bayonets and began patrolling campus and the surrounding area in Golden... This was a problem for Colorado on a bigger level because of the mines, uh, or sorry, because of the minor strikes in the area. Militia forces were uh, not permitting these kinds of weapons, but it was approved by the university's president at the time, whose last name was Alderson. I forgot to write down his first name. However, the chemical engineering building on campus is named Alderson, so I felt victimized Mm, anyway. (laughs) Students also piled desks and debris on the bridge that led out of Golden onto the mountain that goes up to the M and up to Lookout Mountain and stopped cars for inspection. Quote, lest DU students be concealed, civil rights were ignored from the du article (laughs) and this is where there's one discrepancy between the two articles i'm not sure if um this arming and like barricading happened before the du students tried to blow off a bit of the m okay um the the du article said that happened afterwards the mines article said it happened before and that they couldn't catch the conspirators despite the barricading because of the snow okay um, however, November 10th, state governor Oliver Shoup was fucking over it. <laughs> Mind you, he has big, he has like, like 
huge mining strikes happening right, in a right, state. Right, right. He's like, I cannot fucking deal. With these 19 year olds to, who yes, hate each other. Like trying to blow shit up. Like <laughs> stop. The fact that no one's been hurt so far is kind of a miracle. Yes. Um, he said the intercollegiate war, quote, disgraced the state and he ordered the lawlessness to cease. He said, quote, I hope it will not be necessary to send troops to Denver University in the Colorado School if of Mines. I have to come up there, I am shooting one of you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me turn this car around. <laughs> um, it's to send troops to Denver University and the Colorado School of Mines in order to suppress lawlessness. At this point, both universities appointed reps to meet and work it out and, quote, ascertain facts and lay blame, which... <laughs> Okay. Um, the following me- week, Mines was set to play CU, and DU was set to play Colorado College. Mines and CU made a treaty agreeing to, quote, eliminate paint, dynamite, and all other weapons of destruction. <laughs> I like that sentence because it implies that paint, paint was is a weapon also a weapon of destruction. of destruction. Okay, no one will touch your M, which you apparently get really <laughs> weird about. And in exchange, you, you will kidnap. Us up. Exactly. <laughs> and also, like, Don't why, touch my M. <laughs> why did they have to make that an agreement? <laughs> like, were those things commonplace? I'm confused. I even imagine, even at this time, CU is like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, don't do that. What a terrible vibe, man. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Um, at this point, DU began fundraising for, quote, tiger hunting at Colorado College, like for their game, but really to like repair the buildings and windows. Um, quote, the game with the, Colorado, with the School of Mines had keyed and stirred the ministers to anx- anxiously count on a victory this week. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the people who organized those religious wars also said the same thing. <laughs> but, so how do you think that game went, Grant? Which game? The game against CU and Colorado, or sorry, DU and Colorado College. Um, I don't think DU wins that one either. Yeah, do you want to take a guess? Oh, is it like 45 to 7? 38 to 0. Hey, I'm only off pretty, by a touchdown. That was pretty good. I'm so good at that. Anyway, so DU was like, we're going to get him this time. And then they don't. Rah, rah, hoosh cap. Ooh. They don't even Shut score out. a single no. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So fundraising, though, was successful. And they raised money to repair the damage done on their campus. Can I tell you a gross story yes, yes, for yes, a second? Yes. You're going to know. Okay. So um, in high school. My dad was a football player, and my mom was a cheerleader. Stop it, that's so cute. At a small little town in it's southeast like Nebraska. Norman Rockwell <laughs> life, I swear And God. so when we were kids, they would bring us back mm-hmm. to watch my cousins play, because my mom is one of the younger siblings, and she would teach us all the, the cheers. The cheers? Yes, and show us some photos and stuff. Shut up. I do have Listen, a- the other side of that coin is that my dad put me, me, in football and wrestling when I was in middle school. Yeah, which my dad me. calls wrestling because Rass- he's, he is from southeast Nebraska. I do have a cousin, though. Uh, one of my cousins that was on the trip that you didn't meet, actually. She's a step cousin, Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so the person that I'm related to is a stepdad, and apparently her biological mother and her stepfather were, like, in high school together and secretly had crushes on each other and never knew about it until they were like older and re-met and they had both divorced their like first spouses Okay, and they met and fell in love. I kind of love that too. And she was a cheerleader and he was on the football team. That's cute. They're very sweet together. My mom said uh, the story, it was crazy because they, so they came in for the tournament and helped and they watched awards. And then that night they were like, yeah, awards are different than when we were in school. And I go, what do you mean? We just hand out ribbons. Yeah. I mean, it goes, yeah, but like when you were a wrestler, one of the perks of being a wrestler is they would get the cheerleaders or the dancers to like hand out the medals. And as they put it around your head, they'd like give you a kiss on the cheek. Yeah, that's... And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, things are different Right, now. and my parents were like, yeah, it's definitely not good to do that now, but that's just what people did at the time. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. My parents aren't. I want to make this clear. My parents aren't like take us back. My parents are like, yeah, no, no but, things are different. But that's just what it was. That's just what it was it's at the time. Different now. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, do you lost that game? Okay. The second one after. Well, yeah. Hold on. Do you doesn't play football anymore? Yeah. Are you telling me the story of DU's last football season? I don't know, but they did not do well. Uh, DU's final game that season was against Phillips University in Enid, Oklahoma, which they were. The, they're the haymakers. Their coach name. Was her nickname Human Bullet? Uh, again, 
how many of them came home from World War One just untreated? <laughs> and how bad do you think do you lost this game? Oh no. 58 to 0. I was actually going to say 55 to 0. Yeah. That's so fun. Um, the next season, DU does beat Mines, finally, 16 to 6. Okay. It's a, a, it's wins. a win. A win's a win. A win's a win. Hey, a win's a win. You permanently damage your, like, <laughs> oldest building on campus. Second oldest to the chapel. Uh, <laughs> but you won. It's kind of embarrassing for Mines. I'm sorry about that. Um, we did really well this past season. I feel fine about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when I've been there, we've been okay. So the late 1920s uh, was when peace broke again between <laughs> DU and Colorado School of Mines, and Robert Selleff led a group of DU students to Mines to, quote, blow the M off the mountain. As Again? His, as his son recalls it, yeah. Uh, Robert was caught, stripped, shaved, branded, and his private area was covered in plaster of Paris, which is calcium sulfate hemihydrate, and then he was dropped off at 16th Street in Denver on a cold, icy night. For your information, plaster of Paris is the stuff that they use to make casts. <laughs> Why are they always going for the M and not just like blockading the river that makes Coors Light, which is literally also right there? Literally, or, you I could don't know, hurt them in so many other ways. Set a small brush fire. That place is highly flammable. Also, the M is just so <laughs> visible from anywhere in Golden. Like you're not doing right. a good job. I'm of being actually kind subtle. of like, did no one? No cannons were around. <laughs> we had just fought a war. Not a single cannon. Not, no one had them. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, Air Force is like just down the road. <laughs> yes. Well. <laughs> Not at the time. Yeah. 30 years later. Um, but so Plaster of Paris is also used for casting molds and repairing drywall. So he <laughs> had that on his The most terrifying balls. thing is that everyone's like, oh, what a harmless little plank. Prank. <laughs> And, and the mind students are like, you will never forget the night we come to your house. <laughs> I love it so much. I just watched the uh, Modern Family episode where Gloria is pregnant there at the end and yeah. like, she's really yes, feeling yes, the yeah. hormones. And it's Halloween and someone eggs their house and she opens the door and she goes, you throw egg on my house, I kill what you love. And then she like runs after them. And that that's been so on a loop much. in the back of my mind, just I kill what you love. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> However, Robert Selleff, the one that was like, we're going to blow the M off the mountain, ended up having a pretty successful career after okay. he graduated, which included 16 years on DU's Board of Trustees. And he received the university's highest alumni award, the Evans Award, which is named after oh, John Evans. Wait, is that the... That's the false... I'm going to give you a high five. <laughs> Thank you. That was actually you. really well done. Thank she brought it back you. at the end. Um, I do have... If I had time, I wanted to talk about some modern pranks that yes. people play this is one i won't go through like the full i have like a, a whole other list in case this story wrapped up in like 45 minutes <laughs> i truly did not know you're gonna do a football topic and you thought i was gonna uh, yeah i i just i don't know i never know how long stories are gonna be <laughs> um there is a quote or there is a prank between harvard and yale okay where <laughs> harvard or yale students disguised as the harvard Pep squad got 1,800 Harvard fans to hold up pieces of construction paper spelling out, we suck. And they told those people that those pieces of paper said, go Harvard. That's so funny. <laughs> That's I know. so good. That no, shut up. When you, what, 2014, Harvard, what are you doing? But here's the thing. I just also so want to be involved. I, I would fall for this it. This is so that's so it's like, funny. It's like it's gonna be right here. It's gonna be right it's here. It's like when, like you know, when cheerleaders do the pom poms, and sure. like whoever has the right color pom poms, like they spell that letter. It's like that. So you only get like a piece of paper that's a certain color. So there's no way for them to like put it together beforehand. Right. Like you just put up your piece right. of paper. Right. It's just and your one it sheet, something. and it's red or white. <laughs> we suck. suck. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Nebraska football used to play Missouri when we were in the same conference together. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a bell that we would play for. Oh, and we won it all the time. Because yeah. Nebraska in the 90s and 80s was really good. Mm -hmm. And then we joined the Big Ten, which is mm -hmm. uh, they will give out trophies for some things. And I, I don't know if we've won it once. Um, and that's OK. Yeah. That's all right. That's fine. Oh, hold on. We're talking about rivalries. I don't know if I told you this or not. I'm gonna so, pick up my my diploma really quick cool. just to show. Um, while you say that. So the school I went to in Nebraska for high school, um, I guess I'll say the name Lincoln Southwest. Uh, our rival, Lincoln Southwest, and catch this, our rival was Lincoln Southeast. Uh, <laughs> it's all directional, and so. so what can 
East, exactly. bro. Exactly. Southeast, bro. Southeast, Lincoln bro. Lincoln East was the Spartans. Lincoln Southeast, the Knights. Lincoln Southwest, Silverhawks, which is not a real animal. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we once beat them in their homecoming game, and in retaliation, they drove a car through the front door of the school. <laughs> It didn't usually get that intense, but yeah. I love those pranks. There was a senior prank, I think, one of my early years in high school where they put the principal's desk on Mm. the roof. (laughs) They also, I think, took the bar out of like, you know when you have like two double doors, there's like a bar in the middle. They took that out and drove like a bunch of cars into the school. I miss those times. I, uh... Yeah. I, I'm going to have to cover a bunch of tracks here when I tell the story. Someone at some point I know of told me this story. Um, but I am I, I, secondhand. Yeah. The person who told me it saw it themselves. A bunch of buddies feed a bunch of newborn kittens a bunch of milk. The kittens are going to be fine. They're not going to die. Okay, thank you. Feed them a bunch of milk. Yeah. Put them in a cardboard box. Man, did you get that cardboard box inside the principal's car where all the kittens now fed an incredibly rich diet shat over everything. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I love that. Hold on. Look at my face real quick. <laughs> oh, that. I know, right? oh, that's funny. That's really fucking funny. I want you to know I, that is what I will. Do, what I just said. That's what I'll do with teachers too. Yeah. I'll be like, hey, real quick. And I want you to know, students, or former students. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the juiciest gossip. It has to be told right then and there, and we cannot type it up <laughs> in our government emails or G chats to each other. We have to say it non-verbally to each other. I uh, maybe that's a Patreon thing I'll have to remember for later. But anyways, yeah. Um, go ahead. This is the last little bit. Um, this is. Oh, I have a picture here. This is the a picture of the DUC or DUCSM oh football my game. God. It's so I'm, snowy. No, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, we're in, gonna talk about that okay. in a second. We're gonna talk about. It. Stay focused. <laughs> There's so much. This is a black and white photo, and you can still see how much snow there is. The caption is "Snappy scenes from football sizzler between Mines and DU." Again, the longest title. Love I've the ever adjectives. Read. Yes. Again, I think it's like if you couldn't read or your eyesight mm-hmm. was poor, you couldn't read the small text. Yeah. A really descriptive headline was important. Yes. Um. This is a political cartoon that I found on the Nine News article that depicts a mine student. Dear old alma mater, for thee. Howl and smash, rickety crack sack, crash, blow him up, shoot him in the leg. <laughs> oh gee, but call, but I'm call it. I'm proud of my college. It's a mind student. He's like holding a gun, and there's like a scarf on it that says America's prize lunatic. Yep, really classy. <laughs> Dynamite for college buildings is how the dynamite is tagged. <laughs> Send them to the coal mines is how it's captured. And there's just, I'm guessing, a dead person behind them. <laughs> He's also holding a bottle that says acid. Yeah, I don't... Oh, because oh, caustic. Right, yeah. right. Okay. Um, is there anything... Th- the moon is mad at them. Look at the top <laughs> center. <laughs> Solid political cartoon. It is, yeah. Really nice job. Um, to this day, so this is this is my rock that I brought back from the M when I graduated. I would say it's ten pounds. She loves both rocks equally. <laughs> yeah, I don't even. Okay, I'm not that sore from the gym. I can still curl yeah. it. I can still curl it. It feels like ten pounds. Yeah, no, it's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've had a burrito this size before. There's, <laughs> there's like a. I don't know if it's a myth or not, but maybe some fraternity students will like weigh it if it's like if they think it's not ten pounds, okay. and that'll give them an excuse to give you a different rock that is way more than ten pounds. Nice. Good. Um, and that's the threat that you get. That you you like, don't bring a ten pound rock bring, to mine. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's a crucial lesson in engineering about getting your measurements right. Measure twice. Uh, this is my belt that Grant... It needs more cowbell. More cowbell, yeah. And then we also give you... Or the, your diplomas are like made in silver. It's like a oh. silver plate instead of a piece of paper. And then they mail it to you, like I don't know, like five months after you graduate. If I had a paper one, it would be gone by now, to be clear. I have a paper one. Yeah, I, I, it would be. It would have been deceased. I have a paper one that's four times the size, but not made out of silver. What's fun, you can't close it because it's made out of silver. Yeah, you would think they would have engineered that better. It's really just a book spine issue. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> 
but silver nitrate. <laughs> it's so fun that you Maybe. got to like take us into your world for a little bit. Yeah. Proud it was fun. It this was, was good. Fun. This, this was one came time. out. Came out. This was solid. Yeah, I did all the research on like the CU DU rivalry, and then I was like, "That's three pages." <laughs> what now? But, but, but I felt like that was the that took the longest it in did. the episode. It definitely did. Yeah. Everything else was just like a lot of details. So you're telling like. me you will watch college football with me this fall? Babes, I'll always watch college football with you I if you give it. me alcohol. Cool. I love. Or weed. I love to host. Uh, we'll have to do it September, October. That's fine. Um, so that way I don't have like a speech tournament or something to go to. Um, I've learned a lot about football, to. mostly unwittingly. I am not here to mansplain football to you. Just win red team, Nebraska. <laughs> move forward. See, here's That's the thing. It. That's is all that I need. I, you, I understand the basic rules of football now that, like, Casey has told me on multiple occasions. <clears throat> but even every time someone gets tackled, I'm like, ooh. And they're like, oh. It's, he's fine. Uh, he's okay. That's supposed to happen. And I'm like, oh, that wasn't bad for either team. Okay. That's I fine. mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of. Oh yeah, TBI no, I, research. I get it now. But it, uh, yeah. Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, I mean. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> all these brain injuries. And then I'm not going to change all of American sports culture. The Super Bowl yeah. was two weeks ago. Yeah. But um, that's all I have for this episode. It should be noted that uh, next week's episode we're actually going to record after next next week's episode. Yeah. So if we say something on next week's episode that is then really not acknowledged on next next week's episode. <laughs> Don't be nice. We've now said the know. word next a lot. Basically, three part episode, instead of going one, two, three, we're going one, three, two. Yes. Because two is uh, my turn, and we need to record tomorrow to get caught up, and I'm not going to be able to get And out. I decided the theme a couple hours I ago. I found out at about 7 15, yeah, which was he about was like, two I'm hours on my ago. way, and I was like, great, the theme is. <laughs> but I have an idea. We'll see. I will have, I'll want to okay. watch something, but I have no, an idea okay. already. I, oh. I made that note at one point. I was like, I am I listening, but yeah. I, this is not me. You did me the texting. exact same thing that I've <laughs> <Yes>. done <laughs> about it, several times. It was like, do you see? It's not text. I don't want you to really see, but it's not it. me just it. being like, well, I won't get it on. Oh, uh, title idea Blast Off. I love that. Okay, perfect. I love that. All right. Excellent. Uh, okay. Well, you can find us on basically all social medias, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I think that's the main three. Yeah. YouTube as Well I Laughed. You can email us at wellilaughedpod at gmail.com. And you can find additional content as well help make the podcast possible yes. on Patreon, where we are Well I Laughed Podcast. Until then, I'm getting better at that. You are. Oh, that and was viewers so like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, that was good. Okay. I need to stretch. Bye. 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 <laughs>